All right, YouTubers, how you diddling? This is the Dispose List, and this will be my sixth Battlefield Beginner's Guide. In this video, I'm going to talk about the Scout class and his primary weapons. I'd recommend you go back and watch uh, previous videos on weapon choosing and maybe the previous classes, the first medic one at least, as I explain quite a few mechanics and fundamental uh, details and underlying properties of weapons and I won't be repeating that information each time because these videos will be even longer than they are now if I do. So I'm going to tell you what makes scout weapons special that's different from the other class weapons so some underlying mechanics I haven't covered before. I'm also I'm then going to go and talk about the individual variants as I usually do and I will then compare the different models of scout rifle. So one mechanic that is unique to scouts is the sweet spot. Um, if I pick the Russian sniper rifle here, what you'll see in the damage drop-off uh, chart there is the damage actually increases after a certain distance, goes to its maximum and then drops back down again. And this area here, the uh, top of the uh, hump, the plateau there in the chart, is what's referred to as the sweet spot. And each rifle, in general, there'll be some exceptions, I'll cover that, but each rifle has a different sweet spot. So across the various sniper rifles, you'll see a large variety of sweet spots, pretty much um, between 30 metres and 150 metres, I believe. You can pick a rifle with a sweet spot that's appropriate. Now, that sweet spot means uh, the maximum damage for that sweet spot is 100 or more for one rifle actually but what it means is a one hit kill if your enemy is within that sweet spot range um, and you hit them in the chest basically so arms and legs that's got a damage reduction on it that's standard for almost any weapon but the chest is um, ordinarily not a one-hit kill, but with this sweet spot, it's a one-hit kill. It's special to scout rifles. And so in combination with scout gadgets like the periscope, which has a rangefinder, you can be quite devastating if you make good use of that sweet spot. Move out to the right range from the objective, <coughs> wait for your victims to appear and one-hit kill them all day. Another unique thing for uh, the Scout class is uh, breath control with which you can remove the natural sway that soldiers have when aiming down the sights. So ordinarily you'd see when you look down the sights the weapon gently moves with your soldiers breathing in a figure eight. The sniper can press the shift button when looking down the sights and he will hold his breath. Obviously he can't hold it forever but while he's holding his breath that scope is rock solid, no sway effect. Another unique thing for scout rifles, almost all of them, a couple of exceptions, but on the whole scout rifles have zero spread. They have perfect accuracy. What you fire at, what you are aiming at, is where the bullet goes. Obviously there might be bullet drop over long distances, but there is no inaccuracy, no random variation um, as a result of spread that all other classes are subject to. Um, also, uh, all sniper rifles, sorry, not sniper, scout rifles, have bad spread when moving though. If you're looking down the sights and you're still moving, um, or if you start moving, then the spread gets really quite bad. So those traits are common across all scout rifles, um, but I'm going to go back and start talking about each individual variant. And the first one up is uh, the Russian 1895 trench variant. So this trench variant uh, is like other class trench variants in that it has improved hip fire um, properties. But it's also a bit unique in that the trench variant of this Russian rifle makes some of its more basic uh, characteristics change also. So this Russian trench rifle is actually a unique weapon in itself, really. It also changes the damage to between 79 and 40 and you can see if I show the damage drop off there, it's got a very short range drop off. That must be what, about 30 meters or less. Then that quite quickly drops down to only 40 damage at range. So it really is a short range weapon. It's got quite a low velocity, further suggesting it's only really useful at short range. 580 meters per second would be 
difficult to lead targets at range. Um, and yeah, that drop off is quite early. And you can see if I compare it just briefly, look at the charts for the sniper and the infantry. It's got a much more usual high damage with a sweet spot afterwards. So that leads me on to the next scout variant I'm going to talk about, which is the sniper. Um, so yeah, the scout isn't a sniper. I made that slip of the tongue earlier. They're not the same thing. A sniper rifle is simply a subsection of the rifles, a variant of the rifles that the scout can use. But yeah, that sniper rifle, the only difference, it doesn't actually have any underlying synthic data differences from the other variants, except it has a scope. So just very quickly, obviously, a sniper rifle have a scope, and those scope magnifications go from 5 to 10%. That's massive. It's the, the biggest magnifications available in the game. Uh, you can, of course, put bayonets on like any other. And it's got the usual set of scope reticles there. So sniper rifles have a scope. They also have a bipod, and, of course, everything that comes along with that. So when you can use your bipod, you eliminate any recoil and you almost eliminate any spread increase from firing, any uh, accuracy deviation firing. There you go. I said these were going to be simple, didn't I? The infantry variant is very much like the low weight in the support and the factory in the medic and assault class. We are talking about recoil decrease and spread decrease advantages. As it says here, it regains accuracy more quickly due to its reduced weight. Exactly what it says for the low weight and for the factory variants in other classes. So with your scout, you'll be using those infantry rifles to make full use of the full rate of fire and not worry about the accuracy uh, being bad if you're firing quite quickly relative to the others. So next we're looking at the Marksman variant, and the Marksman variant is very much like all the others, except it has a scope. scope, um, And no bipod, though. Now, the advantage to having a scope but no bipod um, is that the magnification is lower. Now, you would think, isn't that a disadvantage? Well, of course, if you want to acquire targets to the nearer, then a high magnification can make things really very awkward. So it's for a medium to long range um, target acquisition. The other advantage that's been given to the marksman is there is no scope glint. I didn't mention this when talking about sniper scopes, but sniper scopes from a distance have a distinct glint. Now this is if you're working in daylight and if there's good visibility. <clears throat> people often complain on the forums that there was a sniper shot me, he had a sniper rifle, I didn't see any scope glint. Well, apparently you don't always see a scope glint, but you often do and it completely gives away the sniper's position at that time. So the marksman variant gives you still a good magnification, but there is no scope glint. And that's the only difference with the marksman variants. Getting through these quite quickly now. Next up we have the carbine variant. Now you can see if I compare it with the marksman and infantry, have a look at the barrel of the gun there. You can see what it says in the description is true. This has a sh is shortened pattern uh, and it improves mobility in medium range engagements. But by mobility, what it means is it has some hip fire capability. It's better at hip fire than other scout rifles. It also is better at ADS, aiming down the sights when you're still moving. It's still not great, but it's uh, it's got half the deviation that the other scout rifles do. But the recoil and spread is the same as other scout rifles. And lastly, another oddity, somewhat like the Russian Trench, is the M1903 Experimental. So again, not only does this variant uh, change some of the additional characteristics, it changes some of the basic characteristics of the rifle, such that it's almost a completely different rifle, to be honest. You can see from the picture there, the, the mechanism here for loading and firing is completely different in the Experimental. That part is completely changed. And indeed in game, as if I remember, if you change between the experimental's normal bullets and between K bullets, it actually replaces an awful lot of this mechanism in game, which is quite a nice animation. Look out for that one. Anyway, so the experimental 
as a variant, though. Uh, it has the ex emphasis on mental, I've written in my notes here. Yeah, because it's kind of like a cross between a scout rifle and a pistol. It increases the rate of fire to 360 rounds a minute. So that's six bullets in a second. Um, <clears throat> and in a single fire mode, that's really quite impressive. So if you pound that fire key, you can fire six bullets in a second. It's got 41 bullets ammunition in that um, magazine there. And it's kind of like, uh, as I say, a cross between a rifle and a pistol. It's like a rapid fire pistol, but it, it has very low recoil and low spread. It has good hip fire characteristics and good aiming down the sight characteristics. It just doesn't do as much damage. You can see the drop off there is enormous and quick so again like like a pistol good short range ability and then drops off really quickly so that is all the variants covered already uh, you can see just here there's a lawrence of arabia's smle but that's pretty much exactly like the as far as i know it's just a reskinned smle mark III infantry there's no actual underlying technical difference between those two it's not a different variant at all so now I'm going to talk about the different rifles and the difference between those rifles. As I mentioned, the Russian Trench is a completely unique bird, so I'm going to have to talk about the Sniper and Infantry. But as I say, all of these rifles are pretty similar, so I can compare that Russian Sniper against all of the others. And when you do, what you see the difference with the Russian uh, is it has a rate of fire of 56. It has a five bullet clip. It, they can all be loaded all at once. Um, that the reload function of these guns is something to look out for. So this one has a five bullet clip. If you use individual bullets, then they load individually. Once you've used all five, it loads all five at once. So it is actually more efficient to use all five and then reload all at once. Um, the velocity of this rifle is 820 meters per second, which is pretty good. That's uh, amongst the highest in these sniper rifles. Um, and it doesn't have bolt action. People often refer to scout rifles as bolt action rifles, but you can see here under the scout's hands here, it's got a lever sort of sling pull here underneath the stock. And this means when it's in action, you can fire reasonably rapidly. I mean, that rate of fire doesn't sound rapid, but you can fire and it doesn't move your aim around, doesn't move your sights around too much while you're firing because of that reload mechanism. I should say the sweet spot there. It's difficult to tell in these drop-off charts where the sweet spot is, but that sweet spot uh, is between 60 and 100 meters. And it's the same with most of the others. That it ramps up from a few, quite a few meters earlier and then tailors off back to the original damage amount. So 80 damage here, sweet spot 100 damage, one hit kill between 60 and 100 meters, and then back down to 80 damage further out. So next up we have the Gewehr 98 and this rifle is again 80 to 100 damage um, and it has a sweet spot slightly different 80 to 125 meters slightly further out than the Russian. The rate of fire is 50 very similar to the Russian and most of them are around this to be quite honest. It has a five bullet clip um, and individual reload so you can reload one at a time if you use all five it reloads all five at once in a clip the velocity is 880 meters per second which is very high that uh, means it's very accurate or at least it's very easy to make shots where you have to lead the target there's, there's less bullet drop than the other scout rifles so now we are looking at the SMLE Mark III, the Lee Enfield. Um, and this, as you can see, is another standard shape um, sweet spot based rifle. It goes from 80 damage up to 100 at between 40 and 75 meters and then back down to 80. The rate of fire is 53. The magazine, though, is 10 bullets, and that can reload in two sets of those five clip, uh, five bullet clips. So two clips, five bullets each. So you fire one bullet, it reloads one bullet. You fire eight bullets, it'll reload one five bullet clip and three individual bullets. So you have to be efficient as you can with the reloading there but you've got a 10 bullet magazine which is nice compared to the five bullet magazines the velocity there is 740 meters per second which is not slow but is obviously not as fast as the russian and the gewehr 98. 
And then we have the Gewehr M95. I don't know what the M stands for. Some expert could tell you, but we have the Gewehr M95. And this has a slightly different damage drop-off model. This is the main difference with the Gewehr M95 and those other rifles. There is no sweet spot, not on any of the variants. You can see in the damage chart there, damage drop-off chart. It has a maximum damage of 90, and that slowly tailors off to 79 between 50 and 100 meters. That goes down to 79. So the advantage there is it never gets um, below its nice predictable amount of damage all the time, starting at 90 rather than starting at 80 as the other rifles do. So it's a good, large, predictable amount of damage every go. Um, the rate of fire is 67, slightly faster than the others. It's got a five bullet clip, which is not unusual for these uh, Scout rifles. It's got a pretty low velocity of 620 meters per second. Um, so you are better off not doing any extreme range or lead shots with it. But one of the big advantages is it has a straight pull bolt. And in action, what that means is you barely have to move the uh, crosshairs or the iron sights when you are taking your shots. So you can really keep acquiring that target, um, which is good because you generally need more than one shot, only doing a maximum of 90 damage. But you can follow that target because you barely move your sights when you reload. With the other bolt action rifles, not so much the Russian 1895, as I explained, that has a swing action lever underneath. But the other bolt action rifles, there is usually a significant amount of movement when you you slide that bolt um, with the Gewehr 95 very little target acquisition is very nice now the M1903 here um, is a similar rifle uh, aside from the experimental as I talked about earlier which is a very different animal indeed but the marksman and the sniper are much the same as the other scout rifles you can see from the damage drop-off it has a sweet spot that sweet spot is between 100 and 150 meters so that's the longest range sweet spot for those one hit kills that there is um, in conjunction with that the 1903 has slightly lower drag than all the others and it has a good velocity 820 meters per second so that might re uh, make this the the long range rifle of the bunch uh, really uh, it has a magazine of five, so that's a one five bullet clip, much like the others. A rate of fire of 54, much like the others. And of course, along with that sweet spot, it's uh, got 80 damage to begin with and a, and a one hit kill in that sweet spot. So then we have the Martini Henry rifle. Now, this is a little bit unique in that you can see the sweet spot there is really quite early and the drop off goes down to less than the original damage so it starts at 90 which is higher than most other rifles most go from 80 to 100 and then back down after the sweet spot this goes from 90 in that short area there then it goes up to 112 between 30 and 80 meters that sweet spot there is 112 damage and you'd say that was overkill perhaps but of course if you hit a body part where the damage multiplier reduces the damage then it's good to start at more than 100 you might get a kill I'm not quite sure how the maths works out there so anyway it goes up from from 90 up to 112 which is a one hit kill uh, if you hit the chest in between 30 and 80 meters so this is a short range rifle and to more back that up it's dropping down to 70 damage at range it's clearly not intended to be too effective at range also backing that up is the fact that the underlying velocity bullet velocity is 440 meters per second only so it's really quite a slow bullet you'll really see the effect of that if you're trying to lead targets at distance or fire a long way the bullet will drop you from the gravity and from the uh, bullet drag. Um, the other underlying characteristic that you can't tell from these charts here is it has really quite bad upwards vertical recoil um, and you see that in gamers when you fire the gun you just lose track of your target. Your, the gun shoots up in the air and target uh, acquisition you know re keeping track of your target i should say can be really quite difficult especially in the new sniper variants which you can earn um, since the latest patch um, using a magnification and still having that vertical recoil really makes it hard to keep track of your target 
So I mentioned the Lawrence of Arabia SMLE when I was talking about variants. Next up we have the Lebel Model 1886. I'm not sure of that pronunciation. It is with the new French They Shall Not Pass downloadable content. So it does not really spelled like Lebel, but anyway, the Lebel Model 1886. And this is looking like a reasonably normal scout rifle. The characteristics are indeed from 80 damage up to 100 in that sweet spot, and that sweet spot is sitting at between 50 and 85 metres. The rate of fire is similar to the others at 56. It has a slightly different magazine. It's It's got an 8 uh, bullet clip. Um, I think it's actually a 7 bullet clip that it puts into a strange mechanism, um, and you can put one in the barrel as well. It's slightly different. Take a look at that. Uh, try it out when you earned it from the mission in the DLC. But the uh, velocity of that label is 720. That's akin to the SMLE. Um, so not the lowest, but not particularly high. So just to summarise, um, you'd think there wasn't much to choose between these scout rifles, really. And I find you often don't choose between the rifles so much as choose between the variants. So if you are an aggressive scout and you like to be close to the targets, you might well use the Martini Henry, which is very effective at short range. But you might not be like being limited to that short range. It really doesn't do particularly well at longer ranges. So perhaps you'll pick one of the two that have carbine variants so you can use a two and a half times magnification with that lens and ladder sight um, now these both have pretty low velocities uh, bullet velocities but once you get used to that and you get used to how the targets need to be led and how the bullet drop works that's not too much of a disadvantage at range uh, and the sweet spots are reasonably close in uh, or at least the sweet pot spot for the SMLE is. Again, as I mentioned earlier, there is no sweet spot for the M95, so that might be why you choose that. It starts at 90 damage, it's nice and consistent, um, and that carbine makes targets reasonably nice to acquire. If you like iron sights that have come on the infantry variants, then you've got a good choice uh, of rifles, and then you can start choosing between whether you want a sweet spot or not, where you want that sweet spot to be. If you like marksman rifles, you like to be a certain distance away from the target, then you've got uh, three choices there, or four choices there. And if you like sniper rifles, again, you've got choices of where the sweet spots will lie. And there's those couple of odd uh, variants, the trench gun, if you really want to play scout, but also want to play with a, a very fast uh, repeating rifle and then there's that strange experimental working like uh, a high-speed pistol in a rifled body so there's a lot of uh, choice with the scout in a way even though it seems that the scout rifles are really quite similar so that is the scout rifles the scout primary weapons i hope i've given you enough detail and uh, information on the underlying characteristics to help you make your choice next time you're spawning in so you can pick the right weapon for the situation or the right weapon for your playstyle. so cheers youtubers thanks very much for watching please leave me a thumbs up if you like the video if you found it useful and informative uh, leave me a thumbs down if you feel you must please leave me some comments I like to see the comments especially if you make your own videos always interested to hear what you think thanks very much see you next time